Jesus, that fucking guy's flying low. Did you feel that? Just shook my whole fucking garage out here. Um, all right. Man- Mandalorian pinball likeness. Now, a lot of you guys sent this to me. It says, hi, Bill. Love the podcast. Thank you. What are your thoughts on being on the side of the Mando pinball machine? The Mandalorian, for those of you uh, who don't watch sci-fi, is a new branch off of the Star Wars franchise. John Favreau. Is running that over there, and now they're coming out with merch. And one of the things they came out with was a pinball machine. And old Freckles has his face on it. Very small, but I am in there. Uh, wondering when the last time you played pinball, if you got a free game from Stern, the pinball company. Um, all right. I did not. But if Stern is listening, I, I would love one. I don't have any room for it, but I would I would just get rid of some shit for that. Um. I love pinball. Last time I played pinball, I was in uh, Asbury Park, um, New Jersey. I was doing some, uh, what the hell was I doing out there? I did some gigs right before I was doing SNL. And uh, we were down there, me and Club Soda Kenny, and my wife uh, took the kids out. We, there's an arcade right down there across from where they used to have the, uh, right around the corner, right up the street from where they used to have the, uh, the carousel with the horses and shit. And we went in there and they had all the classic old games. And uh, there was some game in there. Nia just said, I'm, I'm, I'm the shit at this. And she just kicked my ass like three times in a row in it. But I played pinball in there. I'm a huge fan of pinball. Um, I did not get a free game from the Stern Company. Maybe I can get a company discount. Um, I don't know. I just think it, that's the coolest thing ever. Um yeah, I've done a lot of cool things, but that is one of the coolest fucking things ever to be um, part of that part of that world. So there's three different levels. There's there's the entry level one. It's like a Camaro, right? There was the Rally Sport, the Berlinetta, and the Z28. And uh, I don't know. Those things are pretty fucking sweet. I will tell you that. All right, NFL newbie. Hey, Billy Belichick. Uh, after listening to you talk about the NFL for years, I decided to give it a shot. I watched la- the last Super Bowl and could see myself watching it. So I will be following the next season when it starts up. Nice. Now I just have to pick a team to root for. As a Swedish man, I feel like I have to reclaim my pillaging heritage and pick the Vikings. What do you think? Dude, I think that's fucking perfect because I never would have picked that. I would have said just be a fan of the uh, the Buccaneers. You know, watch Tom Brady and, uh, you know, what's his uh, fucking Gronk and maybe Julian Edelman (laughs) if he comes out of retirement a year or so. Uh, Do they have any good players and do they have any interesting, uh, anything interesting about them? Thanks and go fuck yourself. All right. Now, while I have to be honest here, and people from Minnesota, uh, maybe you want to go to the cupboard right now and uh, go get yourself uh, a big Viking Take a big Viking swig or something, because I have to tell them the history. I have to tell this person the history of the Vikings, okay? All right. So this is the history of the Vikings. Uh, They are an an original AFL team. All right? The AFL was, the last AFL was the third version of an American football league, using that name. And the NFL was established at that point, having a board absorbed. Last one they absorbed was the... uh, all-American Football League, uh, which brought in the Browns, Otto Graham, and, and Paul Brown, and, and the 49ers, and a few other teams, right? So um, the AFL starts an upstart league against the NFL. The NFL laughs at them. But as they laugh at them, they, they shot two torpedoes at them. The first thing they did was they figure out which owner had the deepest pockets, and that was Lamar Lundy. And he had a team called the Dallas Texans. So what the NFL did was immediately or, uh, award Dallas a franchise, 1960, the Dallas Cowboys. And the only reason why they did that was because they didn't want um, – they, they wanted to take out the top owner. They wanted to try to chop off the fucking head. So basically you're – immediately you had, you had no professional football team in Dallas, and then overnight you could choose between – 
seeing the Dallas Cowboys get the shit kicked out of them by all of these famous NFL stars that never came through, Jim Brown and all of those guys. Or you could watch some upstart league across town. So they did it deliberately to try and bury the Texans, which worked because the Texans ended up having to leave and went to Kansas City and became the Chiefs. The other thing they did was uh, they offered one AFL team an opportunity to join the NFL, and that was the Minnesota Vikings. So the Minnesota Vikings were an AFL team that never played an AFL game. They just jumped ship on all the other owners. So that's what they did. They joined the NFL. So 1960, they came in. And in 1969, the only title I believe they ever won, they won an NFL title in 1969, played the Chiefs in what was still called the NFL-AFL championship game, I believe. And they lost the Super Bowl. They were the last NFL um, champs. So then after that, retroactively, those first three, four AFL-NFL title games were then called Super Bowls. I think that's how it is. For some reason, I'm feeling like the the Vikings versus the Chiefs was the first one. Um, 19... 69 NFL title game. Let's see who was it. The Vikings versus the Browns. This was the 37th and final game. Minnesota beat the Browns. Am I fucking good or am I fucking good? Yeah, they beat the Browns. So they have won a title. If they counted, if they counted, (laughs) they counted NFL titles. Uh, Let's check the Vikings because I want to make sure. Let's see. the, The Packers lost beat the Chiefs in the first Super Bowl, and then they beat the Raiders, and then the Jets beat the Colts, and then the fucking Vikings lost to the Chiefs. That's how it went. So let's look up the Minnesota Minnesota Vikings. Here's the tale of the tape. Um, let's see. Wow, that is like the quickest credits. Let's see, playoffs. Uh NFL championship game. Yeah, they've won an NFL championship. That's all they have. They've won some division titles. They've never won a Super Bowl. They actually were the original Buffalo Bills in that they lost four Super Bowls in a very short period of time. They lost back-to-back years to the Dolphins and the Steelers, I believe, in like 74, 75 or something like that. They lost to the Raiders in Super Bowl eleven, and they lost to the Chiefs in Super Bowl four. Um, so you're basically signing up for a franchise that has a history of breaking, <laughs> breaking people's hearts. Uh, Vikings, let's see, Vikings projection. But you should definitely jump in because I feel like it has to, just mathematically speaking, it has to be coming to an end here. Um, okay, Vikings hopes for 2021. Let's see what comes up here. Five prospects, the Vikings hope, four takeaways from the Vikings regular season. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know who their fucking quarterback is anymore. I don't know. But here's the deal. You're from from fucking Scandinavia, right? You should definitely pick the Vikings. They've shit the bed for 60 years, other than in 1969 with Joe Cap, I believe it was. I think Joe Cap was it. Was he the guy who I think finished on the Patriots? And we drafted a guy named Joe Plunkett, and he's like, I'm out of here. And he was the first Latino quarterback to win a uh, to win a title, a championship. But for whatever reason, they don't fucking count those. So um, I would definitely jump on that bandwagon, you know, and it's easy. It's easy to ride out Tom Brady's last seven seasons <laughs> and be and be a fan of them. I think the Vikings are the perfect team. For you to fix, uh, to, for you to pick, I think if you actually flew over here and went to a game, you'd love Minnesota. Um, the Twin Cities is a great place to be, and you'd see a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of you know Scandinavian bloodline out there. Get yourself a juicy Lucy; you'll have a great time. I mean, Minnesota is one of my favorite places, but you can skip the Mall of America. Um, and what you should do instead is watch a highlight of the Minnesota North Stars in that stadium. I would watch that instead of going to that fucking mall. All right, NFL newbie. I already read that one. All right, CDC versus America. 
Oh, boy. Hey, Billy Boy, bitch tits. Billy Boy, bitch tits. First off, my lady and I were impressed to see you in Nashville at the Grand Ole Opry. What a fucking venue to perform at. Anyway, the CDC just announced today that as long as you're fully vaccinated, you can resume life without a mask or staying six feet apart. But there's still a lot of Americans that don't agree with the doctors and are still going to wear a mask because they don't want to be misrepresented as a Republican. Is that why? I didn't know that. Not that I am one, but when do you think people will start listening to the professionals and turn off the fucking news? Um, Never. Never. Until, you know, somebody shut down CNN and Fox News and all that crap. But even then, then they would just turn to social media and, like, they would just listen to each other. And I just think, you know, we're not smart enough. (laughs) And there's also too many channels to just do the news now you have to have crazy sensationalized shit like i don't like feeling bad so i don't watch the news and i have not watched the news i don't know what's going on um i watch a little bit of it you know i saw what was going on you know in 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 tel aviv jerusalem and all of that and in palestine and all of that stuff is starting back up again which is fucking heartbreaking um, and you can't come up with a solution. And I just, I don't know, just having kids and stuff. And I just see those bombs being shot and just knowing that they're hitting people's children. There's just no way around it on both sides. And the whole fucking thing is heartbreaking because, um, I went over there. I saw both people. I saw Israelis. I saw Palestinians. They're beautiful people. I just wish that, you know, I wish there was a way human beings could live without oppressing other humans. It's like, in order for me to have, you have to have not. And there's just different degrees of that throughout. And um, it's this fucking inhumane business model that just needs to stop globally. Um, and it all starts with mushrooms. Um, anyway, I... Ch- <laughs> I have no solutions. I challenge anyone to delete Facebook and turn off the news just for a week to see the little bit of peace that comes to your life. I don't know. Maybe I'm a stupid idiot, too. No, you're not. The second you think that you, maybe you're an idiot means that you're smart enough to know that you don't know everything. And that is, of all the bullshit I've said, this person here, that is great advice. Delete Facebook, turn off the news, just like... Stay off social media for a week. Don't watch the fucking news. And it's amazing. Your life becomes nice and small. I'm going to go to the store and get some butter, you know. <laughs> and you can kind of slow down and fucking enjoy life. As opposed to just like uh, that chicken little shit that's on like social media and, uh, and, and fucking news. Anyways, the person says, all the best to your family. Below is the tweet from the CDC. Oh, let me read it here. Open the link. Open the link. Update. Okay, May 13th. If you are fully vaccinated against COVID-19, you can resume activities without wearing a mask or staying six feet apart. Or staying six feet apart. Except where required by federal, state, local, tribal, or territorial laws, including local businesses and workplace guidance. That's fucking awesome. That's awesome. All right. I love it. All right. Democrat, I can't wait to go to a baseball game. I can't wait to go to a sporting event. I can't wait to go out and do stand-up and make people laugh. I did stand-up. I did two shows at uh, two nights, three shows at the Comedy Store. And I got to tell you something. After a fucking year and a half of doing stand-up, standing next to highways and in strips of grass behind fucking motels, being inside and not having any other noise to distract me. I I felt like I was on steroids. Like I was swinging a weighted bat for like a year and a half. And now I'm getting up there like swinging like a wiffle ball bat. And I kind of noticed that with like all the comics were fucking murdering. I came walking in. I saw Sebastian for the first time. And I was looking to say hello to him, and I was in the back room. He, he kind of came out, and instead of coming into the green room, he just left. By the time I realized he wasn't coming to the green room, he, he, he left. I haven't, I haven't literally not seen that guy since this bullshit started. He was fucking 
destroying. And I could see it in his face, like how much fun, how great it was to be back. So very happy for him. Him, by the way, uh, Sebastian's doing a movie with Robert De Niro. How fucking crazy is that? It's fucking amazing. Um, so congrats to him. All right. Democratic Socialism. He's doing, I should say, doing another movie. His second film with Robert De Niro. Um, all right. Democratic Socialism. Uh, Dear Billy for Father. Uh, when I hear Democratic Socialists speak, I often agree with, with what they're aiming for. Oh, God. Did I start the socialism discussion on here? Healthcare availability, taking care of fellow men and women with excess resources, et cetera. Yeah, nobody is against that. Uh, well, some people are against healthcare availability because they're just like, I can afford healthcare, so fuck everybody else. <laughs> That's another one of those. I have, and if you have not, you fucking figure it out. <laughs> My house is up on a hill and I look down on you. Suffer. Um, Anyway, the problem is that they push this on a federal level. All right, this is going to educate me because I don't want this. At this point in American history, it's impossible to have that type of system. Banks and corporations have so much control over everything our country does. See wars. Well, thank you. Thank you for actually getting to the root of the problem. Instead of being like, you know, it'd be too expensive. It's like, why is it too expensive? Do you know when I was a kid, so much shit was made here. And ever since they went overseas to go uh, to get away from the unions with who's kidding who? They got a little fucking, they acted like a bunch of fucking divas. And the corporations, it wasn't 100% the corporations just being cheap fucks. Uh, They said, fuck this, we're out of here. But now that they're making the profit margins they are using sweatshop labor, they're like, if they made it here, then a T-shirt would cost $6,000. It's like, no, it's that. The only reason why that is because you're trying to keep the same profit margins that you have when you're not paying people shit and you're oppressing them in other fucking countries. That's why it costs that. And what do they always do? They blame their shareholders. Mm. Fucking cunts. Anyway, voting for this type of power to be handed to the current government would just end in abuse. Um, Obamacare bankrupted the medical industry because it was written by insurance companies. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but that if, if they wrote it, yeah, I could see that happening. This is the field I'm in, and I'm concerned for the next few years, uh, for the next few years of healthcare availability. All right, this person is, a, is an expert here, at least compared to me. Oh, compared to me, everybody's an expert. Okay, local level politics need to be stronger and people need to be accountable for who they send to Washington to represent them. That's true. That's true. Otherwise, blindingly saying, yes, this sounds good. Let's give them the power to do so. That's what I do. It's irresponsible without watching everything they do closely from there on after. Yeah. I mean, that's an airtight argument. You're 100% right. I remember somebody telling me, a long time ago that like what people just sort of vote for president every four years, most people, but how important your local elections are. Um, I think people that, you know, they just, the genius of this fucking thing is they got you running on a wheel. So you don't have time, but I swear to God, if we paid attention to these fucking politicians, the way we pay attention to sports, myself included, um, it, we would definitely have a much better, more accountable system. Um, so there you go. Hey, look at that. Look at those last two fucking people who wrote in. This is some smart shit here. Stay off social media for a week and don't watch the news and uh, pay attention to who the hell you're voting for and uh, follow up to see what they do. Don't blindly say yes because they got a blue tie or a red tie. Or, you know, to be fair to the ladies, a blue bra or a red bra, right? All right. Socialism versus capitalism. Oh, God damn. I I really opened a can of worms here. People, I don't even know. I couldn't give you a definition of either one. Hey, Andrew, can you please get Bill to read this? I've been writing to Bill for a couple of for a couple of times before. It would be so grateful if you get this to him. Thank you very much. All right. Dude, I got to already say, you are suspect that you, you, you're an adult and you wrote a sentence. I've been writing to Bill for a couple of times before. All right. 
Hey, Billy. Hey, Bill. Pasty fuck dangle balls redhead, redhead cunt. Burr. I'm going to keep this short because I know how hard it is to read out loud for you. Yeah, it's about as hard for you to write a fucking sentence. Um, I am a fellow Liverpool fan from Tunisia living in the Netherlands. Ah, fuck, it's his second language. My apologies. You are smarter than me. God damn it. I thought for once I wasn't going to be the dummy. Anyway, um, I don't get why Americans only believe in extremes. Oh, shut the fuck up. I don't know why you dumb cunts, if you want to give us constructive criticism, why you would open it with a statement like that. You just put me on the defensive. Oh, have you figured it out? Have you figured it all out in the Netherlands? I've been there with the illegal drugs there and fucking all of these guys with itching their fucking heroin scabs on their neck trying to sell you a stolen bicycle. That's not an extreme. Do whatever the fuck you want here in Holland. I guess it's just in um, Amsterdam. Anyway, either socialism or capitalism, nothing else. The ideal, in my, in my opinion, the ideal, in my opinion, system is actually a mix between the two. God damn it, this already sounds interesting. A country with, capital, with capitalist economy, but also the same time social policies like nationwide health care and affordable universities. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's like, hey, what if you just did heroin once a month and you didn't get addicted to it? Um, anyway, countries which are successful with this. The Netherlands, where I live. Well, you pat yourself on the back. Finland, Norway, Denmark. All right, I want people who aren't white from the Netherlands, Finland, Norway, and Denmark to write in to me, and I want to know if this guy's version, because I'm assuming this person is a white dude and that, that this is in fact the equal opportunity closest thing to perfect that it can be. Uh, I will tell you this. Uh, one of the biggest cunts I ever met was in Denmark, this taxi driver. I forget what he said, but he turned around at the end of the ride because you Americans are so stupid. Huh? And I, Oh my God, I fucking, I almost punched that guy in the fucking head. I was so fucking, he was such a fucking bitch too. One of those fucking, you know, six foot four, 130 pound fucking European guys. Fold like a fucking lawn chair, as they say on crime stories. I stayed in that cab. My wife was trying to drag me out. and I fucking just sat there trash. Oh, yeah, you're so smart. You drive a fucking cab. And he's like, oh, oh, and he's putting his fucking bitchy hands up. Who's kidding who? I didn't almost punch him in the face. I was just fucking mad and I yelled at him. That was the real thing. I wanted to punch him in the face. All right, but I was afraid because I watched fucking, uh, what is that guy? We had the drugs type to, type, uh, taped to the inside of his leg and he fucking goes to jail. Or the fuck is the name of that movie, which I will never watch again. It was so fucking terrifying. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to go to jail, but he was a big fucking, he had a big mouth and he was a big bitch. Uh, anyway, yes, it will lead to higher tax rate, but also you see where that tax goes and you won't have to sell your house in order to pay for your hospital bill. All right, so you're telling me in your country that there's nobody abusing their position of power and, uh, you know, there's no filthy, stinking rich person there. Or are you saying there are some but not as many and it's spread out better? I don't know. I understand why this can't work in the U.S. because like what Dave Chappelle said on Rogan, to rephrase, higher tax rate works in countries where the people trust their government. Also, U.S. is controlled by corporations. Um, I kind of believe that all of the countries at this point are controlled by corporations unless you have a dictator. Uh, am I crazy thinking that? I do like how you guys are rejecting our food. <laughs> all you had to do was look at us to know you didn't want to put that shit in your body. Um, all right. Once again, every other country seems to be better than this one, and they've evidently solved all their problems. Anyways, side question. I'm a tw I am 29 years old, and I would like to start playing drums. Is it too late for me? No, because you're probably still in college because you don't have to fucking pay for it like those fucking college student lifers I met when I was in Finland. Um, no, it's never too late. It's never too late. It is so much fucking fun. It is so much fun. Um, if you live in a place where... 
Um, noise is going to be an issue. I recommend buying the V drums, the electronic kit, if you can afford that, or a used kit if you can't. Um, and I also recommend um, looking in and learning all about hearing loss and, and uh, tinnitus, or however the fuck you say that word, and get yourself those Vic Firth headphones and really, really be careful with your ears. All right? Also, he said, you're doing great learning French. I speak French, and you are doing great. I'm currently learning Dutch, and I know how hard it is to learn a new language. Well, I had to set that aside because I have to, like, I only have so much space in my brain where I'm going to pick it back up when I'm on the other side of this fucking instrument thing. Uh, P.S., thank you for the podcast. It helped me through some tough times and for being open about the shit you were dealing with. It helped me realize certain things about myself. Look at me. I'm like a fucking bald, freckled male Oprah. Go fuck yourself, you cunt. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you for the input, and I'm happy uh, your life is better. It's doing better. Um, girlfriend of three years caught cheating. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Boom, 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 boom. Bam. All right. Dear Bill Burr. Oh, wow. This guy's in such a fucking bad place right now. He didn't even trash me. Um, I just found out my girlfriend, the love of my life of three years, has cheated. Here's how I found out. She went out to get drinks one night at 6 p.m. and came back home at 10 p.m. and proceeded to cuddle with me in bed. The next day, she is at work and I am on my day off at home. Her iPad is linked to her iPhone. Whoops. When she gets a text message on her phone, it pops up on the iPad at home. She got a message from some guy and it read, Hope the dick helped last night. Oh, God. I confronted her about it, and she couldn't give me a straight answer. I decided to leave the house and stay with the family member for the weekend. Once I came back to talk to her face-to-face with her, she admits to having sex with the same guy twice. She also said the night she was out drinking, the guy suggested they go to his car and initiated to have sex. I've also caught her texting another guy about how deep she can go implying she can suck long dick and how much dick she can take. Oh, boy. Uh, We have been through a lot together, (laughs) from meeting each other's families to being there for each other when a loved one has passed away, even to saying I love you every day. My family loves her and her family loves me. I don't get why she would do this after all this time. I really love her, but want to teach her a lesson. Any advice is helpful. Yeah, dude, you got to get out of it. It's over. Um, you shouldn't want to teach her a lesson. You shouldn't want to do anything vindictive to her. What you should want to do is go out and meet a person that's going to love you the way that you're going to love them. It's not going to do that to you. That's it. I'm sorry you're going through that. Um, yeah, uh, but you have to. You gotta. You gotta leave that one because that's going to be. You know, it happened. It's going to happen again. So I hate to be the guy to tell you that. But um, the good news is you could have been married with kids and then find found that out. And then you, you, you'd be linked to this person for the rest of your life because you have kids together. So you can get away clean. I would suggest going to therapy. Uh, I would suggest crying about it. I would, exp- I would suggest talking about it to other friends. And I would suggest giving yourself all the time you need to get over it and really get over it before you try to meet somebody else. And um, it is what it is. It sucks. It happens. Uh, But like I said, the upside is you didn't find out, you know, after you were married with kids. All right. That was kind of a bummer. Uh, You know, what's funny, that expression over here. I heard in England that means if somebody fucking banged you in the ass, which make a bummer makes... (laughs) Yeah. Or, hey, man, I'm bummed. Means that that's what it is, which makes way more fucking sense. Because I've never understood that whole thing. Like, ah, it was a bummer. I'm like, what does your ass have to do with something being, you know, bad? Well, I guess if somebody banged you in the ass, unless you wanted it, it would be a... Wait, let's see here. Bummed. English slang. Definition of bum is slang for feeling upset. No, no, in England. Isn't it in England it's something different? Maybe it was a different country. The word is funny because it means something different in the U.S. and in the U.K. In the U.S., to be bummed or bummed out means to be sad or depressed. 
Oh, fuck. Did I, did I click on the right one? In the UK, to be bums means a man has sex with you by putting his penis in your anus. <laughs> there you go. And we can end on that. We ended on a laugh. All right, that's it. Uh, right, he got fucking bummed by his best mate. A uh, couple of cunts stuck together. All right, that's it. Go fuck yourselves. I'll check in on you on, uh, on Thursday. All right, that's it.